Joining us in the studio now to talk about football is football analyst, writer, blogger, you <laughs> name it. He does it all. Rick Olivares. Good evening, Rick. Hey, and Gino. welcome back to the Solar Sports Desk. Wow. Uh, World Cup seemed like ages ago. <laughs> it does, is, doesn't it? But I'm getting my sleep now. <laughs> okay. I mean, first of all, um, you, you've been covering the ASCO since day one. Uh, this team since 2000. Four. Yeah, so it's, it's been a while. You've seen the growth yeah. uh, before they became this uh, national you yeah. know, uh, sensation, phenomenon, phenomenon yeah. in, yeah. in yeah. the Ascals. Uh, but let, let's, let's talk about how you saw it progress from what it was in 2004 to what they are today. The first thing is before when the team would arrive for, at the airport after a tournament, everyone would just take a cab going yeah. home. Mm -hmm. Now they have a bus to pick them up. They have fans so hating them. There are people at the VIP lounge to interview them. Yeah. That's, so, that's the, most, the simplest one. But the thing is right now that it is, uh, we've become a power. Yes. We're ranked number one in Southeast Asia. And in fact, Uzbekistan, one of the top Asian sides in football, wanted to play the Philippines in a friendly. Mm -hmm. We had to turn them down because it happens on a date when we're playing in the Suzuki Cup. Yeah. See, everyone wants to play us. Everybody wants to play us. So we, we've actually made our yeah. mark already in the world. Yes, we have. But of course, we still have a long ways to go. Yes. You know? uh, we'd like to see a Philippine side, uh, two World Cups from now. But it might be a little difficult to see that happening. Maybe in 15 years, it's possible. Okay. But it's, I think it's the generation now that is learning to play the game that will get us there. The young kids. Okay, now I want to talk about the influx of the Phil foreign players. Uh, uh -huh. We saw it happen, uh, you know, bef ages before, uh, mm -hmm. before, and nobody really took notice until a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. we started doing well in the Suzuki Cup, and you know, right, they, right. That, that's that's what kind of made things uh, a little bit, you know, just uh, just blow up. Right. Uh, now, in 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 my opinion, anyway, th this this was never the long term uh, solution uh, mm -hmm. for Philippine football to have a whole bunch of uh, Phil foreign players fly in all the yes, time. Yes, I mean, that's yes. just too difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. However, it, I see the need also for these guys to, to come and up the level of play for the locals. Definitely. Um, for one thing, you, the level of football that they play abroad is much higher. Yes. So you want them to come in and to be able to transfer that technology to the younger, to the, to the local players. We've seen that in Tom Dooley's 1994 U.S. World Cup team. A lot of those players were Germans, were from all from different other countries, and the U.S. didn't even have a pro league back then. Mm -hmm. Imagine they were hosting the World Cup; they didn't even have a pro league. But they saw the potential in the U.S., so they started gathering players from other countries who had American blood in them. Yes, and it's the same thing with us. But if you look at the MLS now, it's a healthy, thriving league with with 20 teams. In fact, they beat Bayern Munich today in the yeah. MLS All Star Game. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let, let, let's fast forward. To today, um, you know the press conference happened earlier right, today right. with with Coach Dooley. Um, b before anything, though, Coach Dooley, what, what's your um, assessment or analysis of Coach Dooley and his short uh, sample um, sample size here? In the I think it, uh, he came in and picked up the team that was left behind by Coach Michael Weiss, and uh, it's now we're in the Peace Cup and the Suzuki Cup. We'll really get to see his imprint. But I like what I see so far. He makes sense. He knows what he's doing, and. You can see the difference in play. He freed mm -hmm. up the players. Uh, he, he, the, the, the football, the attacking football is more pleasant to watch. Dati, ang hirap umabot sa final third ng bola. Eh. But yeah. now, it, it's getting there. And, and you, we just parked the bus before. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know? So, we've seen improvement. But in fairness din naman, even naman to Coach Michael Weiss, there was improvement too. No? I think that since 2010, we've been getting foreign coaches who've been transferring that technology from Simon McMenemy to Michael Weiss and now to... Thomas Dooley, and even the players themselves, the yeah. Phil foreigners who, co who come to play locally, they've brought in a lot, they've added a huge dimension, but I'm going to say this, the talent pool has gotten bigger and it has made the local players better. Yeah. They are challenging now, the Phil Forrest also, for spots on the team. That is, may fear yan. Chief, he would even tell me, Nako, I, I will play. And, you know, just to, to show them that the local player is, uh, no, I, I, don't want, I don't want to retire yet, I'm going to play. Yeah. But now, no, everyone's play, starting to pick their game up. Yeah. You know? Which brings me to, um, <clears throat> well, Schrock. Um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, one of the uh, key figures Definitely. on, on impact the team. Definitely. Impact, impact player. Impact player. High impact. I mean, the energy that he brings, mm -hmm. the skill level that he has, yes, yes. no question. Yes, yes. No question. Uh, it, in your eyes, what transpired between, because he was the, he was the, I guess the main piece in this whole yes. fiasco well, with, 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 uh, with, with Coach Dooley. Well, it's, uh, 
he got subbed out there. Yeah. And uh, in, in the eyes of the coaching staff, he wasn't getting the job done. But Shrocky wasn't 100% in that game, in the, in, the, in, the, in the tournament. He was playing injured. Mm -hmm. So since you're injured, you're not able to do your best. We saw that with Kevin Fair and USD yesterday. You're not able to do your best to do what you normally do. So he got subbed out. And then the next game, he came off the bench, which yeah. he didn't like. But the thing is, you know, the coach will always, and I believe this for our particular coach, he will play who he thinks is best. You know, he wanted to save, save Shrock for the finals and all that. No? You know, if, if you're good, you will get the chance. But you wait, you cannot demand when you start, when you play, when you come off. You know, we've even had a, uh, uh, one of the current players on this team before in his national team debut walk out. The moment he got subbed before, this was some time ago, I'm not going to mention who, but he's, he's on this current pool. He walked out, not going back to the bench, but out of the stadium. Can you believe that? Wow. You know, the, there's a feeling of a sense of entitlement. I flew all the way from Europe and I should be starting. <laughs> Indeed, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's not, diba. Right? So it's, I think it's really not fair given the quality on the bench. You know, whoever's fit, whoever's ready to play, you know, you've got to do what, what's best for the team. It's like Phil Jackson drawing a play for Tony Kukoc in the last 1.9 <laughs> seconds and rather Scottie than Pippen. giving it to Scottie Pippen. Yeah. Let the coach, he can see things that you don't see on the field there. It, well, if it doesn't work, then it's too bad. It's like Louis Van Hal deciding to stick with Silicon in the penalty shootout against Argentina when Tim Krul was the hero in the previous game. Mm -hmm. Silicon looked silly because Argentina won. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's how about in, in Neil's side, Etheridge? Uh, here's another vital cog, yeah, yes. uh, but obviously Mueller has kind of stepped up. Uh, Definitely. He, I, I feel bad for Neil. <clears throat> I, I was there for his debut in Iloilo in 2005. And he was what, 18 years old? Yes, under yeah. coach Norman Fejidero. At the time, Louis Casas was our number one keeper, but Louis left San Beda to study in La Salbacolod. Mm -hmm. So that was the debut of Neil, along with Ed Sacapano and Tats Mercado. They were the keepers at the <clears throat> time in Iloilo. And Neil, the moment he played, he showed that terrific quality mm -hmm. for a player. But the sad thing is, Neil has been injured, yes. you know, he's been on loan. And I don't know all the wires in the wherefores, but if you look at the decision, it's they want to get someone who plays regularly so they can monitor the consistency and the performance. Like one of these current national, uh, pre national players. He went to Coach Thomas before the tournament and said, Coach, I, used, I play for the national team, I, I, I'm coming back, I want to play. But the coach said, you know, it's fine, I, it's good, I want you to play, but you need to have a club to play. It, just, it sounds silly, you don't have a club, but you're not playing, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's like that, eh? you go with that. And Muller has stepped it up. I love Neil, I'm a Neil I have a Neil Etheridge Fulham jersey. Yeah. I love Neil Etheridge. But, you know, Muller was playing better. Eh? Yeah. And then Dato, Patrick <clears throat> Dato, wow, easily could be the starter, you mm -hmm. know. If, for me, it's also it's not just because you have a new coach and a new system. It's also because of the changing of the guard. Yes, this happens in football more periodically than let's say even basketball, because even basketball, even for the national team, you could be in your mid thirties and still playing basketball for the national team. But in football, twenty eight, twenty nine, after twenty nine, I don't think we're going to be seeing Aryan Robin in the next World Cup. <laughs> as great as he was, and he's yes. only like thirty years old. Yes. That's going to be impossible. Wow. I wish, I wish, because I think the Dutch will be a serious contender. I, I hope so. But the thing is, it's like that for our national team. I know that our Coach Aris Kaslib, the technical director of the PFF, they look at players who they can bring up from the youth every other year. You want to add that. The batch of Chris Greatwich, Ali Borromeo, Anton Del Rosario, they came up in 04 with Sila Chifi. Yeah. Sila Phil came up in 06, 05, 06. Yes. Ayana, you add every year, the Neil in 08. You start to add players like that, you know, pa, pa unti unti. And it's like that. You want to bring in guys like Ken Shearer Daniels. Again, the talent pool in the Philippines has gotten bigger. The transfer of technology from the coaches, from the competition, and the Phil foreigners has improved the quality of the local players.